G'day and welcome to shoemaking video number six. So in our last video, we turned our standard into pattern pieces. So in this one, we're going to have a look at leather selection and then we're going to cut out our pieces and also cut out um, the sole piece, which I haven't shown you how to mark out yet. So we'll start with leather selection. Now it all really depends on what what the purpose of the shoe is. So for instance, a boot like this, this is a desert boot, this will have a thicker leather, whereas a dress shoe like this will be thinner. This one in particular, this was two and a half mil thick suede, whereas this was probably made with about one mil um, full grain leather. One of the differences though is that this this is structured so it's got a stiffener in the back and in the toe and it's fully lined. Whereas this is completely unstructured. So it's just one piece of suede all the way through. It is doubled over on the back here, which does reinforce the heel, but otherwise it's thick enough that it doesn't need extra structure. And also the unstructured look suits desert boot style. So the shoes we're making on this course They'll be somewhere in between these two. So not, not super rugged like a boot, not full dress. Um, I'm going for more of a casual vibe. So I've got a few options, just to give you an idea of the kind of leathers you can use. I've got this. So this is oh, one to 1.2 mil thick upholstery leather. It's full grain, it's been milled to give a um, kind of a pebble finish, which probably won't show up. It's got a nice bit of body to it. It's not too stretchy, but it's got a nice bit of stretch so it will easily be able to bend over the front here, the back when we last it, which is good. You don't wanna go with really stiff leathers like a thick veg tan, because you just won't get that flex around the, um, around the toe and the heel. So this is quite good, but it's gonna be a little too thin for what we're intending to do here. Similar story with this. Now this is quite nice. It's about 1.5 mil thick, and it would do. It would make for a much softer shoe, but as much as I wanna use it, I'm probably not gonna wear a burnt orange shoe anytime soon. So I'm rejecting this one simply because of color. And what I am gonna go with is this navy. So this is the same navy I use on my bags. It's about two and a half mil thick, which I don't recommend starting with. Um, if it, this is your first time doing it, I wouldn't go any thicker than two mil, just because it's much harder to pull it around when you're lasting it. I've done it before, so I know what's involved, but I can tell you it's much, much harder to last thicker leathers than thin. This leather is a combination tan, so it's half chrome, half veg. So it's not super stiff, um, but it's still got quite a lot of body to it, which means that I can do an unstructured construction and it's not gonna collapse in on itself like these other two I just showed you would. So this is what I'm going for, a nice, combo tanned Australian full grain navy. So we'll get started on cutting. So fun fact about cutting out shoes, I was taught that in shoemaking, it's called it clicking rather than cutting, which I think has something to do with the sound that's made by uh, cutting dies on a clicking press, but I don't really know. Fun little tidbit for you. So we need two of these vamp pieces. So I'm gonna cut them out of the big section of leather here. Now the thing to note when you're cutting out, so you wanna avoid uh, any dodgy areas, much as you would if you're making any other leather product. So this piece has a lot of scars on it, but I'm not concerned about that because with the look of this shoe, a few scars won't hurt. But there are things like over here and on that part of the hide, there's some um, areas where the fibers aren't super tight. They're a bit loose. Um, 
or there's damage or there's cuts or anything, you want to avoid all of that. So what I normally do is mark a big line around it. So on the underside of here, there's a big cut. Um, so you want to cut around there. Around here is not too crash hot, so we'll try and avoid that. There's a big toggle mark here. But otherwise, the thing to note is that you want the shoe to stretch across the balls of your feet here. Because generally, that's where people vary the most. So I have a fairly wide foot, which means that most shoes are too narrow across here. So for the first few weeks of wearing new shoes, it'll be this painful process of breaking them in and stretching that out across there. So when you're blocking out your pieces, what you should do, you should get a feel for it and feel which way it's stretching the most. So on this piece, I can feel that it's not stretching this way at all, whereas it's quite stretchy in this dimension. So what I'm gonna do is put the stretchy section across the foot and have the tight direction down the line. So the way my shoemaking teacher taught me was triple T, tight to toe. All right, so let me just get another feel for it. So it should fit it should fit nicely in there. I could squeeze it up a little to save material, but I don't think there's much to gain here. So I'm just gonna go um, along where we know it's the stretchiest. So I've got a grease pencil here. Now, these are fairly good. They're a bit inaccurate, a bit imprecise. So I would recommend a silver pen instead, but this is just what I have. So, mark around there. Now the reason I'm using a grease pencil instead of something more permanent is that uh, this can be washed off fairly easily. You can just do this by scratching it with a scratch awl. There's nothing wrong with that. It just doesn't give you any wiggle room in case you decide to move it. So what we're also gonna do is color in those little windows we made. So this is where having something that rubs off is very important. All right, there we have one of our vamp pieces. So we'll do another one just below it. Just testing. It doesn't seem to be any particular stretch there, so I'll just mirror that piece. There's our second one. Now one of the downsides of grease pencils is that they go blunt incredibly quickly. So as you're going, just sharpen it up with a knife. That way you've got more accurate lines. Now that's something you don't need to do with a silver pen. All right, we're going to move this. So when it comes to your derbies, it doesn't really matter where you put it. Um, the stretching issue isn't a concern with the side of your foot. So I'm just gonna position where I can fit it nicely in that wedge. Right, I'm also going to mark the lace holes there. Also, we should have cut some little windows along here to show us where the back strap will go to, but I'm not worried about that for the moment. So we need to cut two like this and flip it over and cut two the other way. Because this will be a right hand side of your foot. That will be the left hand side. 
well, left foot side. So I need to cut a bunch of these. Now remember, cut two rights and two lefts. It's very important and very easy to stuff that up. All right, that's all of our rear quarters done. We've got two rights and two lefts. Now we just need two back straps. So again, it doesn't really matter where they come from. I reckon I'll use this little bit here. All right, that's our two back straps marked out. So we will get cutting. Now there's nothing particularly you need to know about cutting out. I'm using a Japanese NT cutter utility knife, which is nice and thin and sharp, but really you can use anything. The important thing to note is that a lot of these edges will be exposed because unlike with other disciplines of leather craft, we're not finishing these edges at all. And so if you take a couple of goes at an edge and you end up with kind of a little flap sticking out, that will show up in the final product. So you just have to be very neat when you're cutting all of these. When you're cutting the um, bottom of the vamp, for instance, which gets wrapped under, that's a lot less important, but these top edges are quite important. Also, we're going to be cutting on the inside of these lines because that should be right on the edge of the pattern piece. So let's get started. And there is our first piece. So, I'm just gonna skip through the rest of it because it's not particularly interesting. Just a quick tip, you can uh, just cut out blocks so you're not having to move the whole piece around. So I'm just going to use that. So there we go, that's one. In case you're wondering, this is a, again, a Japanese NT cutter, rotary cutter, and I would definitely recommend it. So here's a tip for cutting around corners. Rather than dragging your knife around, what you can do is lay out your template like that and take a bunch of really small cuts. You can do as many as you want. What you should end up with is something that might not be perfect, but for the purposes of this, is a lot better than if we drag the knife around. Okay, so we have 
Now two vamps, two right rear quarters, two left rear quarters, and two back straps. Now we will cut out the sole. So to make our inner sole pattern, we're gonna do a similar thing that we did on the outside here. We're gonna basically cover it with masking tape and then cut off any excess. Now this is gonna be very hard to show you. Um, so just bear with me as I try. So I'm overlapping by 50%. So that's the whole shoe covered. Now to trim it off, you're going to get a large file. All right, now I'm going to rub the edge of it, which should separate it right around that lip. Similar to what we did when we were cleaning up the upper masking tape. So you get the idea of what I've done. Just trim that right to that corner. So that part of the last is called the feather edge just right where it tips over. So I'm gonna continue that until I've done the whole way. Okay, so there it is. So I'm gonna peel that off and stick it to a piece of card. So I've lost my pattern paper, but I do have this bit of promotional material for a Tesla Powell, and it's nice, thick paper. So that's what we'll use. Uh, it doesn't have to be Tesla, you can use any brand. So we'll peel this off which might be difficult. Just stick that down. And then cut it out. And there is our sole. So don't forget to label it. So it's Inner Sole YouTube Derby. Size 10. Right, so we'll cut that out now. For our inner sole, we're gonna use a natural veg tan. Now it doesn't really need to be natural color, it doesn't need to be veg tan, as long as it's at least four millimeters thick. So you want enough material there um, that it's gonna be strong because it's gonna have a foot constantly hitting against it um, forever. And also the last is gonna be stuck to it. It's a pretty integral part of the shoe, so you need it to have a fair bit of bulk. Now one of the benefits of using veg tan is that it will mould a bit to the shape of your foot. It's not super critical, but 
uh, this is what we're using because it's what I have. Now, if you're wondering, all of my leather, including the uppers and everything else I've shown you, comes from a tannery in Victoria, in Australia, called Oz Tanners. All of my leather, including bags and wallets and everything else, comes from them. So, we will get started. Now remember, we need one right and one left. All right. I have a spare one here because on my last project I cut two rights. So I won't bother cutting out a new right, but I'll show you how to cut out a left. Not that there's really that much to show you. Let's lay it down. Now this piece has been left coiled up for too long, which is very annoying. So I'm just going to use a biro. Being very careful not to move the pattern as we go. Now, because it's so thick, it's going to be pretty annoying to cut out. Also, because it's so curled. So, what we might do is just do a rough cut. And then we'll trim it down. Right, so, I'm using a I guess it could be called a Japanese knife. It's one that I made myself, so it's not particularly fancy, but it'll do the job. There we go, there's our left sole. So that's it for the day. We have cut out our uppers, we have drafted our sole patterns and cut out our inner soles. Next time we will be assembling, skiving and assembling the uppers and a process that's called closing the upper. I'll see you in the next video.